Welcome back to Monday's Monarch. My name is Joe Inslee, and today we're going to talk about A.S., the man who should stay away from barbershops. Ahaz was king of Israel from 735 to 715 BC, and he became king when he was 22 years old. Ahaz is also rarely disputed by historians. We've actually found his seal and some records of his financial transactions with the king of Assyria, and they're held at the Yale University where people can go see stuff from the time of King Ahaz's reign. One cool thing about Ahaz's lifetime was during his life, he got to see the installment of the very first Olympic Games. The funny thing is, the Greeks had so many events dedicated to so many gods because they're pantheists, that even though they loved the first Olympic game, they could only fit it in their schedule once every four years. So a precedent was set, they had the first Olympic race and every four years, and we still follow that today. Now while Ahaz reigned, he did lots of evil things. And he consistently had Isaiah yammering in his ear. Isaiah was just a poor prophet trying to do the Lord's work, and Ahaz never listened to it. He started off his reign with problems in Assyria. And those problems just kept getting worse. And he kept trying to talk to the king of Assyria, and it didn't go well. And then the king of Assyria would strike back and mess up parts of Ahaz's land. So one day, Ahaz decides, I'm going to go try to deal with the king of Assyria. And he does this without talking to the Lord about it. It's really not a good idea. But he goes, and when he goes to visit the king of Assyria to try to stop this fight they've got going, he sees something really cool. At least he thinks it's cool. I know the altars. I know the altars. And Ahaz discovers the addiction of his predecessors, worshiping idols and false gods and golden calves instead of the Lord. But like so many celebrities, instead of going to rehab for his addiction, he celebrates it. And so he installs idols and altars all over the land and starts making the land of Israel come under God's judgment for not worshiping him. You would think the first of the Ten Commandments would hold more water with these guys, but it didn't. Now I told you the whole time Ahaz is doing his wrong stuff, Poor Isaiah is just back in the background going, Stop! Don't do that! No! Bad! Bad! Finally, in Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah actually gets audience with King Ahaz, and Ahaz sits down for five minutes to listen to the guy. And Isaiah has this big prophecy. And the prophecy is, if you keep doing all this stuff, your enemies are going to shave your head, they're going to shave your beard, and they're going to shave your feet. Some of you smarty pants know that there's not much hair on someone's feet unless they're a hobbit. And so maybe that's kind of a useless threat. Isaiah wasn't talking about his actual feet. Isaiah was talking about hair that was below the belt and above the thighs. So, pretty dire threat, although spoken euphemistically of as his feet. Now, as you can guess, Ahaz didn't care about the hair on his feet. He did what he was going to do anyway. He got judged by the Lord. He died and he was evil. So it goes with the kings of Israel, unfortunately. But Isaiah did offer one more thing in his prophecy. Because of all the evil that Ahaz was doing, he tried to offer hope to the children of Israel, and he pointed them to Christ. So Isaiah 7 actually talks about the coming of Emmanuel, and how although it's bad now, and although human leaders are failing, there is a leader coming who will not fail, a leader who will save his people, and a leader who will redeem them for his own. 